uh, our final team in the Pacific, the Sacramento Kings, uh, they're key free agents. There aren't many. Jeremy Lamb, if you consider him a, a key free agent, and then Dante DiVincenzo, who is restricted. Uh, Trey Lyles has a team option that I would decline if I were them, but that's just, you know, their notable extension can or their most notable extension candidate, uh, Domas Sabonis. The, I think the raise that they can give him is probably going to be a lot less than he can thinks that he can get. If he hits free agency in two years, I really kind of think it's given what the Kings gave up for him. You absolutely offer it. And for him, when you're looking at, Oh, okay. The 120% raise off of like your, what your salary number is. That's actually probably fair market value for him. When you're looking at 25 million a year, whatever that ends up being on average. So I would take it if I were him. I think the Kings are going to offer it and he won't take it though. That's just my gut feeling. Um, So there's that for him. And then their best spending tool is the non taxpayer MLE. They could like have negligible cap space, but it won't even be as much. They'd have to jump through a bunch of hoops if they want to have more than that $10 million spending tool. And there, I, I think their needs, even after getting Keegan Murray, like they still just need wings and defenders, um, preferably wings who can shoot because you have Sabonis and Fox now that you're running the offense through. So you want to dot them with as many spaces as possible. And then the other thing for me uh, is, do you have a good front court partner for Sabonis? I guess you could consider it Paris and Barnes, but I think you need like additional four power there. And where's Rashawn Holmes? getting traded. And for all this talk about I, my guess is I feel like mid season, there's going to be a mid end contract that Toronto has signed or has on its books. And they're going to be the team that gets for Sean Holmes. Uh, it just makes too much sense on the court wise for Toronto. They don't need to go after this flashy big that costs you Gary Trent jr. Or OG Ananobi, but are there teams that could come in and uh, swoop in and give up value for Rashawn Holmes? I, I was shocked. He got paid as little as he did last summer, but he is, he's a wasted asset. And I think his, his value declines. It declined the minute you acquired Sabonis because those two can't play together. Well, it declined more with Keegan Murray. Cause I think in a perfect world, Keegan Murray is going to play some minutes at center too. I don't know. That's, mm-hmm. that's a big question, you know, coming out of the, the draft is like, you know, he, I, the rap on Murray is that he's a very capable on ball defender and has some switch in him and, and all that stuff, but like not quite sure that he's, he's actually a guy you can play at the five against a lot of lineups. But like, I don't know, the league's only getting smaller, generally speaking. I, I think there's a real path forward. Like, it's possible that that Murray is someone that spends minutes at the five when Sabonis is not playing. Um, so, yeah, Holmes is a total, like, Holmes, I mean, Charlotte, even with Mark Williams having been drafted to play center, like, Charlotte is a, like, a it's just like a no-brainer destination. There's a million of them because Holmes is a, like a, I don't know, a mid-tier to, like, lower third starter I think um, that I'm has a couple like the new solid one. skills for like, you know, backup money basically. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's a factor. Like the thing though, this team's biggest need was, is remains just quality wings in between the Fox Davion Mitchell and then Murray Sabonis bookends because, and Harrison Barnes, I don't think Harrison Barnes is a wing anymore. I think Harrison Barnes is a four um he'll be fine like he's a smart defender you can they're just gonna have to use him on the big wing threats and that's just how it's going to be but that's not optimal positioning so like they just i don't know where they go i think for sure they're going to target auto they're first of all they're going to target every warriors free agent there is because that's how the kings operate like they they go for the coaches they go for you know just everybody that comes from the Warriors. So Porter, I think, is someone to look at. Damian Lee for sure. I actually love Otto Porter Jr. there though. I Absolutely. actually very much well like Otto that. Porter works everywhere. Like it just, you know, that's the, the thing. idea of him anyway. Yeah. This yeah, past season is Otto Porter for sure. Yes. I mean th- that's the thing is Porter is not going to be as good wherever he goes as he was with the Warriors just because they, you know, they manage his minutes. They asked him to do only the things he was good at. It's just it's the difference between being on a team with a bunch of good players and not. Um, but yeah, Damian Lee, they're going to, I, for sure they can look at him. He's a little smaller on the wing side, but like, I would rather play him than Mo Harkless. I would probably just as, just as likely want to play him as Justin holiday. And like, what else? That, that's it. That's, those are the wings. Those are the wings that they have. Um, DiVincenzo is too small, I think to really be like your, you know, you go, you go guard, whatever. Just I also I don't know what his market is going to be. Do you think he's going to get more or less than the bigger MLE type money? They don't need to use that. I want to be clear to sign him, but yeah. ten million a year or less. Well, I think it's going to be less because um, I don't think anyone's going to offer him the full mid level, and the Kings are going to look at that and say like, "How's eight? 
how's you know nine you know, mm-hmm. i think it'll be under that um he could really return a lot of value on that if he could stay healthy and develops a little bit but um he's just you know he's a third guard and, and that's just kind of what he is um yeah i don't know i i think i think they just it, it sucks like every team needs wings but the Kings really need wings and there just aren't a lot that they're realistically going to be able to get beyond the ones. I don't know. Do you have some more that, that you like the fit there for? Um, well, very quickly, I will say if I were them, I would offer Otto Porter the bigger MLE. Maybe it's like shorter. Maybe it's the two years rather than mm-hmm. three or four. I would absolutely do that though and see if he bites because I think he's a perfect fit there. I thought about Kyle Anderson for them, but because they could use some secondary playmaking too. When you look at the, like I, you have some bonus, and Fox, but like, do you trust Davion Mitchell to be like the floor general if if Fox is off the court? I guess you could trust Harrison Barnes for some self creation. Um, this is tangentially related to the free agency targets. I don't understand the obsession with John Collins among Kings Twitter, like Doesn't where there was a talk sense. about Barnes for Collins. I actually thought that made both teams maybe Atlanta like the fit made more sense, but like Barnes isn't a great defender, and then right. for the Kings, Collins and Sabonis, like, yes, in theory, that works, but that would be a turnstile defensively, even like Collins is probably, look, I'm going to be honest. I think Miles Turner covered up for Sabonis so much. John Collins is a better defender than Domas Sabonis. That's where I'd be yeah. at with. Um, yeah. I, I like that you just, that wasn't even a doubt for you. So not, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, not controversial at all on my end. <laughs> um, and, but like, it's weird because they have more like spending power than most teams, but I don't know if there are names out there that might be worth funneling it all into because the wing market is so like barren this summer and i'm wondering if for them even though they don't have you know i i mean you have rashawn holmes like can you get kelly Oubre jr from charlotte for rashawn holmes like i know they have mark williams but is their center position really set they have kai jones as well um they're looking to cut money though so maybe that wouldn't be the route that they go it feels like if they're going to get a wing or there would, there would have to be like a big for wing trade involving rashawn holmes for them because I just, aside from Otto Porter, I'm trying to think of the three, four that I would give the bigger MLE to. I even thought a little bit about Victor Oladipo for them, but that mm-hmm. sort of feels like two, if you could get him on the, the bigger MLE, I might just consider it for the talent upside play, but it does get a little dicey with what need did you actually fill when De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis are there already. Uh, I would have loved for them to have gotten involved on the DeAnthony Melton sweepstakes just because he's essentially a three and D wing who sized like a guard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe you bank on Davion Mitchell showing a lot of improvement with his jumper. And he did have flashes of that during his rookie year. It's just weird because if you wanted me to give you like minimum type wings, like I think Utah Watanabe could work for them. Uh, Damian Lee would be, you already mentioned him would be absolutely fine. Uh, If they're going to spend money though, like make it be, I would go with probably Cody Martin or Amir coffee. Like if they're going to try and throw some of their MLE weight around, those are names that stand out. And if it sounds like we're regurgitating a lot of the the same names, it's because there are so few wings out there right yeah, now. Let's do it. <laughs> right. And um, so like, that's the route I could maybe see them going. Like, and if you're going to just, I don't know what, how much better it makes you, but Torian Prince, yes, in theory, offensively works with you. There's just, I don't know what wing, and I'm calling out a Porter wing. He's like a big for, for what the Kings need most there might be like one or two names out there that are worth piling your full MLE into. Yeah. I, I, again, and it, the issue too, is it's not just, they need wings. Like, because if you're going to play Sabonis Fox, I think Murray can shoot it, you know, Barnes can shoot it, but I, I think if you're bookending a team with Sabonis and Fox, Sabonis doesn't shoot threes. Fox has had one year where he shot threes. Well, otherwise has been really bad you you're, you can't it's it's got to be wing that can shoot so then you're even like it's even scarcer out there so like and if you're going to spend the mle like is it again to regurgitate names is daniel house worth the full mle like no way i don't think so but you like he's one of the very few guys on the market that could sort of tick all those boxes because i think there's there's a case to be made that like they might need to be looking at like rodney hood or like you know in the hood nader snell like that kind of lower tier mm-hmm. The problem with when you add those types of guys that are just real on the margins contributors to a bad team, it just doesn't usually like, they're just not usually the best version of themselves. So it's, it's, it's tough. There are a lot of names, but the trying to match up like what the guy's actually worth with what the Kings actually need. It's difficult to find sort of the sweet spot there. 
and they they almost need like a true wing because you have Keegan Murray and Barnes, so you don't want to skew too much towards the four. Yeah, like, like you can't play Harris. Porter. I know you he's can't small. play Porter with Murray and Barnes. That's just like there's not enough foot speed there. I don't think Gary. Yeah, Gary Harris is a good name for sure. I think this. I we'll get to this in the Northwest, but if Gary Harris is on any team other than Nuggets, I'll be surprised. <laughs> uh, I thought. Well, yeah, we'll get on that the different one, but yeah, the Kings. Offseason interesting. I think for them, they're probably a little bit more fascinating on the trade market than free agency because they're not going to be. I don't think they're going to be a team where you're surprised that oh they bag that name mm-hmm. for like the the big ram. Like yeah, it'd be great if uh, Nick Batum decided he wanted to go there. Uh, it would yeah. be really it'd be really funny if they wound up spending more than the minimum on another big because they're planning on trading homes. And so like, do they get into Hartenstein sweepstakes thinking, Oh, we could Hartenstein shot. He shoots floaters and he shot some threes last year that he could totally play with some bonus. Uh, I didn't, I was, didn't understand the transfixiation with John Collins, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. And Never you're like, sense. yeah. So Kings, uh, I didn't hate their move of the draft, by the way, as much as other people, I still made fun of them for it because I don't think they deserve the benefit of the doubt, but Keegan yeah. Murray seems like he's going to be a, a perfect fit there. So Oh, I did, by the way, consider Chris Boucher for this team, though. Because, one, I love Chris Boucher, and I'm also of the mind, like, you need, like, a real... If Let's just say Rashawn Holmes isn't a high-volume shot blocker, but he's a pretty okay rim protector. If the intention is to move him, or you know you can't play him with Sabonis, you you need, like, a shot-blocking presence who can play alongside Sabonis. And Boucher chucks enough threes that I think it would work. Final, final Kings prediction... The o- or I guess a question, the over under on Warriors free agents that the Kings have on the roster next year is 1.5. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the under. Okay. I'm going to go over just so we can have something to look back on. Grant, this was great. Thank you so much. You're able to f- tell our listeners before they just hear your voice again on the next podcast, where they can find you and all the great work that you put out slash maybe some of those infrequent tweets that you Throw the mess. I bet if I went to your Twitter profile right now, you this is why you should follow Grant. He's not going to spam your feed. No. I bet if I went to your Twitter Twitter profile right now, your last tweet would be probably Hardwood Knox related. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I support the brand. I, I and and yeah, you can find me uh, on the next entry on your whatever podcast feed you use uh, on Hardwood Knox probably and uh, GT underscore Hughes on Twitter. Um, if you want, you know, for some reason you can't figure out where to find Hardwood Knox, just check my Twitter feed because it's like 90% uh, retweeting Dan and Hardwood Knox accounts. So, you know, I stay loyal. We will catch you in the next episode, everybody. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe and follow all our social handles, YouTube, join our Discord. All the links are in the podcast description. And until that next time, we leave you with a shout out to the one, the only, the conference finalist, Frank Nielakina. <laughs>